actually got my uh, armband taken off me in year eight. <laughs> got a red card in a league game, not going to lie, bad attitude, walked off the pitch. Hold up, we've just said the fundamentals. Yeah, you have to I'm not a good example. Pitch, that, that's why I'm not a Any captain. kids out there, yeah, don't listen to me. That. Hi guys, so we're here with Wow Hydrate and I'm joined by two past and present England number sixes, Harry Maguire and John Terry. We're gonna have a little chat about some of the six key moments in their career. First of all, I wanna start with captaincy, both captains. Um, what do you think it takes to be a captain? Is it just on the pitch or does it also come off the pitch as well? I'll start with you, John. I think it's a mix of both, definitely. I think the on-field stuff has to kind of take care of itself. So those, those little bits of turning up on time, doing the right thing every day, doing what the manager says, setting those tones and those tempos every single day are massive for the manager. I think off the field stuff, obviously setting examples and, and doing the right things at the right times really. Yeah, I think it's, it's summed it up well, I think it's, it's both. Um, you've got to be responsible on the pitch, but also off the pitch as well. I think you can't be turning up late, you've got to be one of the first in the training ground. You'll be seen doing the extra bits in the gym. On the pitch, you, you want consistency, you want availability. And I think both equally as important to, to, to any captain in any team. As a centre back, you've got to be very, very disciplined. Yeah, for sure. Um, discipline in a lot of areas, obviously off the pitch, but also on the pitch as well. You, you can't be rash, you can't be getting silly red cards all the time or being dragged out of positions. I actually got my armband taken off me in year eight for the school team in the semi-finals. Never let it go now. What well, for? There must be a reason behind that. <laughs> got a red card in a league game, not going to lie, bad attitude, walked off the pitch, but still, do you know what I mean? In the oh, that, we've get... just said the fundamentals. Yeah, you have to I'm not that. a good example. Top that, that's why I'm not Any captain. kids out there, yeah, don't listen not to me. That, these, are the, big man. these are the guys you want to follow. <laughs> we have to talk about the Euros, Harry. How is it for you, you know, getting to the final? You also, you're now a record holder for England, most goals for a defender, which is amazing. Thanks for um, that. Sorry, I have to mention it, Jack. Do you know what I mean? I can't mention it. It's incredible. How was the Euros? It must have been an incredible experience. Pretty much summed it up. We put huge responsibility on ourselves as a group. Having come on the back of a World Cup semi-final, we knew that we had to go. We had to go further, and we had to push. And obviously, a penalty shootout stopped us yeah. from from lifting the trophy, which is obviously devastating when I think back now. It hurts me, but no, it was it was great memories, and it was a great time for the country to get together. And I think it's it's made us realise that we can go and go and lift these big, big, big tournaments. No, it was incredible. JT, obviously 78 caps for England. How was it watching England in the Euros get all the way to the final? Yeah, obviously incredibly proud from a personal point of view, but like a big thank you to the England team for doing it and, and for also making us believe that we can do it. I truly believe they've got a great chance in this, in this World Cup coming up. Those lessons and those big finals, when you lose those, like, like Harry said, they, you hold them, they live with you forever but they've still got many more tournaments ahead of them. They can use that going forward. JT, I have to ask you about a, a huge moment in your career, Champions League. Mm. How is it winning that? Every footballer says that's the, that's the peak. I think it's the hardest trophy to win. I didn't play in the final, wasn't part of that being on the pitch, but in terms of winning that trophy, in 04-05 we should have won it. 09-10 we should have won it. The year we probably didn't deserve to win it, we end up winning the trophy. And you need that little bit of luck along the way. But again, those experience of kind of not getting there and just kind of falling short leaves that little burning desire inside. So then when you get there, it makes it even more special. So incredible trophy, incredible to be part of that process. Yeah. I mean, with two world-class centre-halves, who is the best striker you've faced? I'm talking about when you've played in a game, it could be Champions League, Premier League. Who have you come up against that you just think, oh, He's hard work, this one. Omri is the best for me. I just think in that prime, I think he's gone down as probably him and Giggs as the greatest in the Premier League history, and rightly so. He was the only player I had sleepless nights the night before the game. Whether it was his pace, his ability to score with his head, both feet, whatever it was, he just had that, that aura about him. Like you see on TV, he's got that aura where you just think, I'm in for a tough game. How about you, Harry? Neymar, when I played against him for England uh, and Brazil in a friendly. It was nil-nil that game, I don't know how, but um, he created so much and he was a threat to everyone. What is it that, that makes someone go to that next level? Because it's not always just ability, is it? It comes with attitude and stuff like that as well. Yeah, and rightly so. And I think as well, being at Chelsea for so long, you look in the academy and you see a certain player and go, he's really good, the academy's talking, they're expecting big things of this player. It's actually the ones that are doing all the basics really, really well. And I know that sounds kind of cliche, but the ones that are tracking runners when they're 16, 17, 18, the ones that are making the, the, the box, the ones that are making their tackles and, and all the basic bits you go, 
he's got something. Okay, he hasn't got the ability of those guys, but it's those boys that generally come through and, and end up having a stronger and better career. So again, I would always flip to that, have the right attitude, do the basics really well every single day. And, and you, have the right you come up with, with Chelsea as well in the academy. Was you always kind of at that, at that level? When I was 14, I was probably regarded as one of the better players within the academy. I went through a stage like all of us do, you bit of puppy fat, you grow. I ended up playing in a reserve game at 16. I come on, the last 15 minutes we were losing 5-0. I scored two goals. But that, that was an opportunity for me going, if I didn't perform well in that 15 minutes, I'm not sure I'll be yeah. sat here today. Growing up, I was never anywhere near as good as the players around me in my youth team or reserve team but there was no way they were going to outwork me. Mentality is such a big part of the game nowadays. Um, we spoke about it earlier in terms of being able to deal with the pressures, um, the responsibilities, the things, the scrutiny that comes with being a footballer. It, it changes so much now that you can be on top of the world and then you can be pushed under. So you've got to be able to, to have that strong mentality. Well guys, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, one last thing, off season, I would really appreciate if user free maybe come play for my seven-a-side team, I could do with a couple of good defenders, so <laughs> the offer's there, do you know what I mean? The offer's Someone there. might be busy, but I'm, I'm available. Look, I know, so. <laughs> check, come on, do you know what I mean? You, you promised me. No, guys, thank you so much. Pleasure, it's been mate. a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Cheers.